Hi there, I'm Ramon Perez, and you're listening to True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Ramon Perez about the new Raid Clatu anthology and more. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. It's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. I invite you to like and subscribe. Ramon is an established cartoonist, illustrator, and designer with over two decades' experience in the creative field. His work has been seen in Marvel, DC, Owl Publishing, Raid Studios, and more. His credits include the all-new Hawkeye, the amazing Spider-Man learning to crawl, his adaptation of Jim Henson's Tale of Sand for Archaea Entertainment, and many more. He is a multiple Eisner and Harvey Award-winning artist and has additionally garnered such accolades as the Honor Book and Official Selection 2008 Silver Birch Nonfiction Award, Forward Reviewers 2010 Book of the Year Award, and the Schuster Award for Best Graphic Novel 2012, amongst numerous nominations for his collaborative works in children's literature, digital media, and comics. His most recent work includes Stillwater with writer Chip Sadarsky. The Royal Academy of Illustration and Design, a.k.a. RAID, is an award-winning artist collective located in Toronto's historic Parkdale. With a primary focus on comics and graphic novels, RAID is a creative ecosystem where artists can build their ideas, collaborate, and access varied expressive platforms. RAID Clatu is a dynamic, new, genre-driven volume from the unhinged imaginations of international creators. And so, without further ado, here's my chat with Ramon Perez about the new RAID Clatu anthology and more. So, Ramon Perez, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Well, oh, pleasure to be here. Appreciate your time. So, before yeah. we get started, I'd like to know what's on your bedside reading table. What are you reading today? Uh, well, right now, I usually kind of have a few books on the rotation when things are in a good groove. And right now, I got quite the the, the complimentary books, if you will. I'm uh, reading the collected Grass of Parnassus mm. from the Imminents. I'm not sure if you ever saw their. Uh, comic that originally started as an Instagram comic and it was collected by ad house. And it's actually, I believe I could be wrong, but I believe it's uh, the last book that ad house will be putting out. It's their 100th mm -hmm. book. The compliment to that is I'm reading the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger biography. So nice. yeah, just <laughs> things out a little bit. Uh, cool. those, those are the currently the two things on my, my bedside table. And, but I'm always, swapping in different things i have like a a, a, a very tall pile of trade paperbacks to get mm. through i i constantly collect and buy old pulp crime novels from like the the 40s and 50s so mm. just like there's always something getting slid in there you know especially if i'm going on a, like a, a short flight or something to a con I'll, I'll grab like something nice and simple throw it in my bag so i can read it on the flight or at the con and that's right yeah yeah Cool, cool. So for those not familiar, what is the RAID Studio? Well, uh, the RAID Studio, or uh, more correctly, the Royal Academy of Illustration and Design, was founded in 2002. So this is actually our 20th anniversary. Oh, congrats. Kind, kind of hard to believe. Uh, <laughs> it, it was founded by Chip Zdarsky and several friends, three who were, uh, it was like Kagan McLeod and Ben Shannon, who were graduates from Sheridan College, and Cameron Stewart, who worked in comics at the time, and they founded uh, the studio. And just as a place, I guess, to kind of like, you know, be around like-minded creative individuals and, you know, inspire each other and that sort of thing. And I was I was one of the first replacements, if you will. Like Kagan was getting married, having a baby, bought a house, all those things that just take up a little bit more of your time and felt he couldn't afford the studio anymore. So I was kind of brought in as the first the replacement member, kind of like, as the X-Men were X-Men are turning over, the, <laughs> the replacement members are coming in, right? And and since that point it grew, guys like Andy Belanger, Carrie Nord, Carl Kershaw, Willow Dawson, uh, just so many talented people over the years have come and gone uh, through this space. Uh, Nimit Malavia, Tanchi Zanjik, Irma, like so many. And basically it just kind of grew and grew over the years. 
and it's always been a studio, but as the studio evolved and the personalities evolved in the space, you know, it became a place where collaboration kind of happened and new and interesting endeavors. And then, like, I think it was in the early 2000s, like around 2000, I want to say maybe nine or 11 or somewhere around there, I'm kind of blanking. We started to really kind of brand ourselves a little bit more effectively as the Raid Studio. As social media became more pre- prevalent and all that kind of stuff right and yeah we just kind of use that as kind of like the banner the you know the the power in numbers ideology of uh, a space that not only did we work together or, or share the working environment you know we took inspiration from each other but we started to do shows together on a larger scale we started to endeavor on publishing projects together working for clients together so it kind of evolved and grew to the point where we are now where we're actually where before we were just like a, a third you know, floor unit in an old brownstone. We're now street level on, in Queen West and mm-hmm. Toronto's Parkdale. Yeah. And, and uh, it's allowed us the opportunity to do different things. We opened up what we call like a little showroom gallery to showcase. Right now we're showcasing a lot of local talent, uh, but our hope is to eventually showcase more international talent as travel restrictions kind of lessen a little bit. People mm-hmm. feel more comfortable uh, traveling, but we also have a cafe. Because of our street front as well, we've also got a new variety of people joining that maybe wouldn't have discovered us because we were kind of hidden up on the third ah, floor. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, so, cool. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting, very interesting times. That was going to lead into my next question. How do you find the talented people who are at the Raid Studio? Well, I think it's a, a, it comes in two different streams. There's the word of mouth. Uh, people know the studio. We've been around for, like I said, 20 years now. So there's often the the reputation as a place where people come, work. There's a good community. And so if someone's looking, they will you know, often get us recommended to them as a place to find their footing or grab a table or whatever it might be. Lately, because of our street front presence, a lot of our newer members – have been people who have walked by or discovered us on like Google Maps or something. <laughs> uh, other artists who maybe maybe some are uh, in the uh, comic book uh, realm, but other ones are graphic designers or publishers or uh, concept designers. Like it's just very interesting. They're just looking for a place to work that isn't home. You know what I mean? Like I, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people over the the pandemic have learn the joy of working from home but i think people forget also there's a double-edged sword to working from home where you're kind of just in the same place all the time it can become uninspiring at times your your work can overtake your your home environment um so it's actually nice to uh, get out stretch your legs and kind of be in a community of other creative individuals uh you know i mean as a guy who like i probably freelanced from home for about 12 years before i joined the studio and I would be very hard pressed to to go back just to working from home full time. I I love the the idea of just walking and you know engaging in like a routine that's out of the house, stopping for a coffee somewhere, coming in, and just engaging with all the just uh, diverse personalities in the space. You know what I mean? And it also like it keeps you fresh as well, like because mm-hmm. I'm learning programs that I might never use because I just you know looking over someone's shoulder and going, oh, what are you doing there? Well, that's an mm-hmm. interesting program. I might pick that up. You might give me some pointers or whatever. You know, so it's 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 a great just for that alone. I, I love it. So, so we're here talking about your latest anthology called Raid Clatu. So I wanted to yeah. ask you, what is your contribution to this year's anthology? Oh, uh, well, this year, I mean, aside from uh, designing the book, I often kind of stretch my design muscles and putting these books together because that's actually kind of what I really went to school for. So it's always fun to play in that realm. My contribution to this year's anthology, uh, story-wise, is a 14-page short story called Air, which is falls into the, I would say, sci-fi, semi-horror genre. Uh, and I'm kind of, what I like to do with these anthologies, I like to play around a little bit stylistically. This time is no different. I'm kind of leaning more into, or trying to lean in more into, into a lot of old... Um, uh, Moebius kind of oh, era okay. stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going a little bit more deadline with, a, you know, just cross hatching and just uh, texture, building textures with a fine line and stuff like that. So it just allows me a moment to play, do something different, and just tell a story that I normally wouldn't get a chance to tell. 
on the day to day, basically. So sure. yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Every every anthology that I've, I've contributed to, I've done something a little bit different, whether it was a romance, a horror, a sci-fi, a fantasy, whatever it might be. Just fun to kind of stretch your legs, you know. And also, just doing short stories is so different than doing uh, a long form story. It's a different right. kind of unveiling of information and type of storytelling. So that's always fun too to experiment with. Yeah, it sounds like fun for sure. Yeah, yeah. What can you say about the book overall now that it's complete or just about to be complete? What do you think of it? Well, I mean, I I am so proud of this book. It's it's our fourth book in the series, and we're kind of uh, we had the first three books that came out just prior to the pandemic, and because we kind of halted production over the pandemic for various reasons, we decided this would be a good time. This would be the next trilogy, hence. Uh, the branding of this one is Klaatu. Then we're going to have Barada and Nikto hmm. as the next two. And this will be the next trilogy of books. But we're actually reaching out to a wider variety of creators, not just studio members. So the, the first three books were usually uh, studio focused with one or two guest artists. But over half this book is probably guest artists. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're like great, talented guys like Hoche Anderson has contributed a short story. Uh, Derek Lofman uh just great Canadian creators who were either in our kind of extended network or who we just had the opportunity to kind of touch base with and invite to this this project and that's something we want to do more of with each volume and kind of make it more of a a, a yearly Canadian uh, oh, okay. creator driven mm-hmm. anthology sure rather than just a studio centric one but yeah I'm really proud it's like we we've got about over 130 pages worth of story it's larger format like uh, the Ben Dizene from Europe so you get you get way more art on the page than uh, than you normally would, and yeah, just the, the the array and diversity of creators is just fun. They're all great stories, and for this one, we're actually making it a flip book. One half on one side kind of leans more into the sci-fi fantasy realm of stories, and the other side uh, leans into the kind of like the reality-based horror stories. So we're kind of like trying to peg in some genres and uh, just have a little bit more fun with the the concept of the book. Very good. Yeah. Well, people can look forward to that for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Now that you've got, you know, Raid Klaatu, this anthology is yeah. coming out. What plans do you have for Raid Studio overall for this year? Do you have anything sort of mapped out as the oh, months yeah. are unfolding? Yeah. I mean, the the, the, the the year started off like so fast. So like Klaatu is launching on Kickstarter on March 7th. And we already have two other campaigns uh, slotted in right after Klaatu. So we have uh, Forceful Bands and Shenanigans, which is volume two to the successful Kickstarter we did last year with uh, Dax Gordine. And then we have my uh, webcomic, uh, Kukuburi, which I'll be finally bringing to print and using it as an opportunity to actually finish the story. It's kind of be left hanging online. I'm just kind of using the printed medium to kind of be the impetus to, to finish the, the tale. Now that's just our, our spring, and that takes us into only like April, May. And we're hoping to use this year also to uh, get more into shows. You know, obviously the pandemic has shifted the, the convention uh, landscape a little bit. While we did one or two, I think, end of last year, this year we've already – I'm like, I'm actually going to Vancouver. I'm not sure when this will be airing, but I'll be going to Vancouver this fall coming weekend – but uh, we have uh, local Toronto shows planned from the Fan Expo to the TCAFs and then hopefully some cross Canada shows and some uh, American shows as well. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, we're a lot of us are really eager to get back on the road and just meet fans, engage, and kind of just share the the, the, the products we're creating here. And we like we have more uh, book books prepared for the fall as well. So we have a busy year ahead, but for I'd say this is probably the most excited I've been about what we're doing in a, in a planned endeavor with the studio. We're really kind of shifting gears here and I think doing something extraordinary with all the people we have gathered here. You yeah, know? So, yeah, it's good. I'm excited for the year to come. Basically. Sounds good. Very encouraging. That's yeah. for sure. It sounds like yeah, yeah, yeah. all of us <laughs> want to get out on the road and, and see people and, and do something yeah. out of our basement. So. That sounds good. Exactly. Sounds good. Yeah. No, it's, it's just nice to. I mean, I think I saw you at the a couple of events last year. Try to. Were, you know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the ones <laughs> were very quiet and, mm-hmm. you know, not a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, just due to fears and right. you know, limitations. But it's actually nice to see things opening up again. And I, I know it'll still be a while. It's not yeah. going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's nice to actually get that engagement back on, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Now, wanted to talk to you about your your projects. You've mentioned yeah. some, but uh, in a future interview, I plan to chat with Peter Nowak uh, mm-hmm. about the Intrepid Savvies comic book that you helped create. So I'm wondering if you could talk a wee bit about that project, if you can. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Intrepid Savvies was a comic. Now, this is like speaking to what I said earlier about Raid and collaborating on things together. This was a project we did with Peter for Tech Savvy, uh, the telecom uh, company. And uh, it had a, I'll let, I mean, I'll let uh, Peter talk to the storyline, but it had to do with a lot of the political uh, landscape happening at the time. It was released uh, fall of last year. Basically, I spearheaded the, or project managed the endeavor. Kalman Andersovsky did the art with uh, Marcus Toe and uh, Paris Aline doing the colors on the project. And uh, basically, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was just basically a comic riffing off of Days of Future Past, uh, X-Men wise, and kind of using that kind of riff to talk about um, internet privacy, large corporate, you know, control, and all this stuff. I think I had to, I'm not, I can't remember the name of the bill, but it was C- C-25, a bill of C-60 or something that was tabled in the House of Commons uh, last year. And this was a direct reflection of that, basically. It's kind of an educational book done tongue in cheek but you know with a message at the end but it was it was a lot of fun and this is like more things uh we hopefully will do more of these kind of projects together at the studio where we can bring in like the talents we need and uh just do something fun and out of the ordinary so so this might be an example of of more commercial work that you're yeah yeah exactly like we we've done a few of these over the years not necessarily comic books sometimes it might be an ad campaign Mm -hmm. for a tv show Mm-hmm. or it could be a children's book uh but yeah we've uh we've done a few of these and uh hopefully we'll have a few more lined up over the years to come they're a nice just way to collaborate on something different you know and and just kind of have things that benefit not only the studio members but also the studio as a whole allowing us you know a little bit extra influx to pay for their you know whether it might be new decor or a tv for the chill room or something you know right. what I mean? or, or expand the library so like when people new members join there's a nice robust library of books here that can they can pick and choose from and, and that sort of thing sounds good sounds yeah. good now we've talked about a lot of different projects uh, yep. that are ongoing now but i'm wondering do you have anything uh coming down the pipe that you can talk about i know that you you and chip are still doing still water i think that's one of them right yeah, so Chip Zdarsky and I are doing Stillwater. Uh, I'm currently on a break from it. We just, I think it's next month is in March. There'll be a special one-shot issue featuring a lot of great uh, diverse creators uh, tackling the little short stories in our world. Um, and I'll be doing like the bookend elements of the story, but there'll be, uh, I think it's like half a dozen stories in there featuring different creators just kind of telling little shorts and kind of expanding on the universe that chip has created um but then Stillwater will be relaunching in uh i believe may for the next arc in the story and to coincide with that i have a one shot i've been working on for image which i can't really say too much about unfortunately okay. because it hasn't been announced yet sure uh but it has to do with music over the decades and nice. so I'm really, I'm really excited to do that, that, uh, that book. But beyond that, it's really just a lot of diving into the, the raid related stuff. Uh, you know, I'm still doing some covers here and there for IDW mm-hmm. and uh, Ablaze and different publishers, but I'm really taking this year to, while I'm doing the, the mainstream book like Stillwater, I, to take my energies and help focus on things like finishing kookaburi i have a i have a couple other endeavors of my own that i've been working on uh, another graphic novel i want to get off the ground oh, next wow. year. Cool. yeah and so there's lots of these little things that i've just been kind of be pushing aside it's really at that time in my life where i'm just like you know what i gotta slow down a little bit and get these get these things done or they're never gonna get done right right um yeah. and i feel i'm in a good spot for that so i'm really, really excited to dive into these things in particular and uh, and some and a couple of actually really exciting projects under the raid press banner for next year, which we're already planning. Oh wow! And yeah, okay. some things where we're, we're we're bringing in other IPs and licenses. And I wish I could tell you more, but we want to we're going to be <laughs> announcing those in the fall, so we'll okay. we'll have to we'll have to get back on here and maybe That's chat right. more. 
in the future, basically. Something to look forward to. That's yeah, sure. exactly. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, speaking of looking forward to, where do you think that people should go online to find out more about your work and Raid Studio as well? I think the easiest place to go would be either any one of the websites because they lead to all the other uh, social medias and whatnot. So we have raid.world, uh, which is basically the hub for the studio. But off of there, you can find links to Raid Press and a few of the other things we do, plus our social media as well. And then for myself, just RamonPerez.com. And off of that, you can find my Instagram, you can find my Twitter and all of that as well. And uh, I'm pretty, I, it's, it's, I'm mostly active on Instagram, but even that's been faltering of late because I've been so busy with, sure. uh, with my day job and work. It's hard to keep up on some of the social branding and, and promotion and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a resolution I got to uh, kick into gear for this year <laughs> to do a little bit more of that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just hard. It's the last thing on my plate, unfortunately. But uh, those are the places anyways where they can find myself and the studio and its members. Thanks to Ramon for the chat. You can discover more about Ramon on Twitter at the Ramon Perez and online at RamonPerez.com. You can discover more about the Royal Academy of Illustration and Design on Twitter at the Raid Studio and online at Raid.World. And you can discover more about Raid Clatu on Kickstarter. Thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2022.